Disclaimer, these guys are moths, not butterflies. I bought them from a Swedish seller, and she called them butterflies. But it has something to do with the translation from Swedish to English. And throughout this video, I will be calling them butterflies, not moths. I'm sorry. Hope you still like the video. What's up scavengers, hope you're all having a good day and welcome back to Ant Scandinavia. Today we are taking a close look at my Marocanian butterflies, also known as Amata mogadorensis, and how I made their enclosure. But before we get started with that, I want to mention two very important things. First of all, we are very close to hitting 5k in subscribers and I don't want to miss out thanking you on that, so instead now I'm thanking you a bit too early. Second of all, this is by no means a tutorial. These are my first adults of this species and my first butterfly species kept. This video is simply me sharing my experience and my build of their setup. Thank you for understanding. As you might have seen in these clips, these guys are really clumsy and don't really fly that well. They sit still most of the day and don't really do much except looking gorgeous. Therefore, I didn't really feel the need to give them that much flying space since first of all, I didn't really have access to a huge enclosure and second of all, they don't really seem to need it because of their behavior and very short lifespan. If you follow me on my Instagram at ants underscore Scandinavia, you know that they have actually sadly already died off when I'm writing this. But enough talking, let's jump into the building of this vivarium. First of all, let's start out with this gorgeous round glass flower pot. Then, I went on adding three soft pads on the bottom to make it easier to move around. I would recommend adding these to all your enclosures, especially the glass ones, to reduce vibrations and to reduce the risk of scratching or cracking the glass or plexiglass. And then to the required drainage layer. I used clay balls for this and cut out the appropriate divider. You can use either a mesh like this or a plantation cloth as I do. The difference between a plantation cloth and a normal mesh is that the soil never goes through the cloth, which would make the drainage layer dirty, but it lets through the water super easy. For those of you unsure why you need a drainage layer, it is to simulate a thicker dirt layer, since in nature, the soil doesn't stop 10 centimeters under the surface. Having a drainage layer keeps the soil from getting too damp from accidental overwatering, as well as reducing the risk of stagnant water, which can produce mold or fungi. After adding my normal soil mix made of potting soil, sand, leaves, sphagnum moss and a bit of cocoa fiber, it was time to scape the setup. This was really the hardest part of everything. I wanted them to have taller climbing areas, so I went with a tall Chinese money plant. The round shape of this setup made it really hard to scape, since there was not a clear back and foreground. but I eventually got pretty satisfied with this design. I wanted to make the tank good looking from all angles, because of the tank's ability to turn easy. Because of this, I went with a simple hardscape with some cork bark and some root structures. Something I kind of regret doing is to add this much ground litter, since it created unnecessary places for fungi and mold to grow, and didn't really add much that appeal to the layout. But, well, you live, you learn. Overall, however, I was satisfied with the setup and went on to building the lid. Remember that you can always just change the setup whenever you feel like it, if you're not totally satisfied with the results. If you like me in this situation, are not gonna keep nesting animals inside. So listen guys, I found out this really cool trick. Making a clap or snap like this when doing things you don't really want to do really speeds up the process. Just look at this and boom, it's done. So I would really recommend you doing that when you do your project. Good luck! But honestly, I got so frustrated when I noticed that the glass bowl was not flat at the top, leaving a spring that they could escape from. My solution was to add a rim of rubber lining around the edge, and so far it has worked fine. Then I cut out some mesh for the holes and glued it on. But damn, it looks so good now that it's all finished.
Now it's time to add the main inhabitants. So I kept them in this little jar just for a couple of days and they had laid so many eggs in that little time. I think most of them should be fertile since I saw them mating several times. If any butterfly experts are watching, could you please tell me the optimal way of raising eggs to larva? When writing this, let's just say that I have a couple more eggs waiting. Thanks. Transferring the butterfly was not as easy as it looks. They were very stubborn and most of them were so clumsy they just fell off the paintbrush. Some I just had to pick up by hand which was really awkward to get done. They were a bit stressed out when they first got into the tank but they calmed down about an hour later. I got one out to take these super close ups and damn I never expected a butterfly looking so bird like close up. I mean this almost looks like feathers. Well, that was kind of all I had coming for you guys, hope you enjoyed it. Please don't comment a bunch of hate that the tank is too small. I know it wouldn't hurt having it a bit taller, but as I said, these guys have a very short lifetime and stay still most of the time. Plus, I've gotten a ton of eggs, which means I'm doing something correct, right? Well, once again, I am super happy for hitting 5k soon, and I'm planning of something big, really big. Keep an eye out for that here on the YouTube channel, but also on my Instagram at ants underscore Scandinavia for updates on that. You really don't want to miss out. I have been planning a ton. Until next time, have a good one, Scavs. Bye! And a few last words. I know I haven't really been uploading so frequently the last, you know, half year. I will really try to keep it up, um, especially now with my new animal room downstairs, which you would have seen if you follow me on my Instagram. Um, I post some updates on that there. But thank you so much for staying with me, and thank you so much for watching my videos. That's all. I really just wanted to say that. Hey, do.